Hey everyone, I just received a whole bunch of new components from Beta FPV. These are components for making 3S and 4S micro drones, so I'm going to be testing these and sharing that with you. I've got the 2 to 4S all in one flight control board, new 1105 motors, new 1103 motors, and some new 4S batteries. But for today, I'm going to focus on just this motor right here. It's 1103. 8,000 kV. That's significantly lower than this 11,000 kV motor that we've been using. Um, this first came out on the Beta 75X and I've been having a lot of fun flying these on my Shutterbug 85 builds. Uh, this is a great little motor and at first I thought they were just going to lower the kV and keep other things mostly the same. Um, but there's actually a lot of differences between these motors and that's what I want to show you today. I don't think these motors are available for purchase just yet, but hopefully they will be soon. I just got these and I haven't even had time to put them into a build yet, so there won't be any flight footage in this video. Normally I would wait to make a video until after I got more hands-on experience with a product, and I like doing that, uh, but what happens is I get busy and the number of incomplete projects just keeps building up on my hard drive. So today we're just going to look at these motors on the bench, and then if you want to see the builds that I make with these and how those turn out, uh, then be sure to subscribe and I'll post those as I have time. All right, here it is up close. My initial impressions are good. There's a lot to like about this motor. It feels very smooth. Seems like it's made of high quality components, but it is noticeably larger and heavier than its 11,000 kV counterpart. It has a 1.5 millimeter shaft and an open bell design. You can see there's no holes in here to capture the screws. So you're not going to be using screws with the props. You're going to push them on with this style of motor. There are a bunch of props that are designed to be pushed on without screws. These are just a few examples, but I really like using these two inch Emacs Avon props. If you ever have props like this and they're too loose, you can use a bit of floss to tighten those up. It's easier than it sounds. And I already made a video about that. There's a link in the description below. It has a C-clip on the top, which should help with durability, and a C-clip on the bottom and bearings in between. The foot has the four-hole mounting pattern, which is standard on motors in this size, 9 millimeters diagonally, but these are not M2 screws. They're M1.6 screws, which look like this. That's the same screw that was used on the original uh, 75X motor. Having a smaller screw saves a little bit of weight, but it's a less common size if you need to find replacements. Fortunately, mine came with 20 screws, which is more than enough to finish your build and have spares. I love it when companies include extra parts like this, so thank you, Beta FPV. If you had four of these screws, it would add about a third of a gram to your build. I tend to use just two screws per motor when I put these in a whoop style frame, and so I would have eight of them total. How many you use is up to you. The wires that come out from the stator are protected by a generous amount of heat shrink, which is glued into place with this black rubbery glue. I don't know if you can see it, but it's on both sides, and that should help with durability because it's going to help prevent fatigue on these wire connections and help prevent these wires from being pushed up and rubbing on the bell. The wires themselves feel like very nice quality. It's a supple silicone that flexes easily, um, and it's also a thicker wire gauge. If you compare that to this 11,000 kV motor, you can see the difference in the wires right here, both in thickness and in flexibility. These wires uh, would kink and stay that way. Um, and so I think these wires were a little bit more brittle. I like the quality of the wires on these new motors, and they should be able to handle more current, but that does cost a little bit of weight. The wires are also significantly longer than before. It's just over 40 millimeters from the edge of the bell to the back of the clip, and that is longer than you're going to need for any of Beta FPV's frames, so that's interesting. But it's great news if you want to put these motors on a larger frame like the Floss or the Primo. This right here is the Primo, and if I line it up, you can see that's going to go all the way to the center. You could even have the arms slightly longer, and it would still reach a whoop size flight controller in the center. If I hold it really close, then you might be able to see the gap between the stators and the magnets. If you compare that to the 11,000 kV motor, you can see that this one definitely had smaller gaps. And here's the inside of the bell if you wanted to get a better look at those magnets. One thing that I noticed right away is that when you spin the bell, it feels super smooth. It's not very notchy at all. In fact, it might be the least notchy brushless motor that I've ever seen. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing in itself. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below. But in my experience, uh, motors that feel really notchy usually have really good punch, uh, but often take a lot of power to do it. I'm hoping that this motor will be pretty efficient on 2S and then still have that punch if you push it to 3S. If I push the wire around with my finger, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. This is the 8000 kV motor. 
And this is the 11,000 kV motor. I don't know if you can tell from the movement of the wires, but it definitely feels more notchy in your fingers. Fun side note, this 12,000 kV 08028 motor by Beta FPV is probably the notchiest motor I have ever seen. If we put one on the scale, we can see that it's just under 3.8 grams, and that's not bad for an 1103, uh, but it's heavier than its predecessor. This was 3.3 to 3.35 grams, and so that's about half a gram difference between these two motors, or two grams difference when you have four of these motors. Two grams may not sound like a lot to you, but in the size builds we're talking about, that can be pretty significant. Now, of course, some of that weight comes from the longer, thicker wires, but some of it comes from the bell and the stator itself. Now look at these two bells. The 8000 kV motor on the left is about a millimeter taller than the 11000 kV motor on the right. And even when I peer down inside of it, uh, it sure looks like this one has a larger stator. For a little bit, I was convinced that this one must be an 1104 and not an 1103, so I took off one of the bells to check but it turns out the actual stator really is just three millimeters tall. The reason it looks so much bigger is because these windings take up more space, and that's because the windings also have a larger wire gauge designed to carry more current. Now this is one of my 2S Shutterbug 85 builds with those 11,000 kV motors. This one just happens to have a Mobula canopy on top. If you haven't seen this before, then check out the other videos on my channel. Uh, but these already fly so amazing on 2S, I really don't feel like they need 3S, but it'll be fun to try anyway. If you're thinking about building a 3S whoop of any kind, the all-up weight is something that you're going to want to consider very carefully. We just saw that switching to the 3S motors might add some weight. Uh, using a 3 or 4S flight control ESC board is also going to add weight, but the real weight comes from the batteries. A lot of people are flying 3S micros on 450 milliamp hour batteries, uh, which is this size. This battery weighs 40 grams, which is as much as this entire build. Using a large 3S battery might help you to deliver a lot of thrust, but the thrust to weight ratio is actually more important for how it's going to perform in the air. And even aside from that ratio, you've got to be careful. If you've got a lot of weight and a lot of thrust, it's going to put flex on a whoop frame, and Betaflight really hates that. Fortunately, there are some lightweight 3S batteries on the market now. GNB makes one, and so does Race Day Quads. I have the Race Day Quad version, uh, but the two batteries are so similar, they might just be the same thing. This is 300 milliamp hour uh, 3S but it's HV label, so you're only going to have 300 milliamp hour if you actually HV charge. But this is 24 grams, and that is the lightest 3S battery that I am aware of. I also picked up this 350 milliamp hour version. It has a slightly higher C rating, and it's 28 grams. 28 grams happens to be the same weight as this 450 milliamp hour 80C GNB battery, so it'll be interesting to see how these two batteries compare 2S versus 3S, this ADC battery versus this uh, 50C battery. The quality of this battery is really pretty incredible. If you're looking for a powerful 2S battery for ripping around outside, I can't recommend this battery enough, and it works great on a build like this. So what do you guys think I should build first? Should I build a 3S Shutterbug 85, or put those 8000 kV motors on this Primo frame? On this frame, uh, running 2S, I suspect it'll be really good with uh, two and a half inch props like these, um, and 3S is going to be crazy on this thing. Or would you build something else? Uh, what would you build with components like these? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope this has been helpful. Happy flying.